Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with my card video for Tupelo Designs LLC. I'm going to be using some of the supplies that I got in this month's design team package. I'm using the Ken Oliver Color Bursts. I got one in my package but they sell all of the different colors there. And so I'm starting with 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. And I first spritzed the watercolor paper with water beforehand so that the color burst would immediately start reacting. And then I'm tapping the color burst on. What I'm trying to do essentially is just create a nice wintry background sky with the color burst because it gives a little bit more of a random look. Although you can create something pretty similar looking with distress inks if that's what you have on hand. I think that the color burst would be a little bit more vibrant than the distress inks if you were to water them down like this whereas if you were to just blend the, the distress inks directly onto the paper you could achieve something pretty similar but I like the watercolor look here just for something different and this is the easiest way to use color bursts as just sort of directly applying them to the paper and letting them react and sort of do their thing. With color bursts I kind of just like to play and layer and just sort of see where it goes so here I wanted to make sure the whole paper was covered because like I said it's going to be a sky so I did sort of paint on the color burst a little bit and then I started drying it with a heat gun. I was tapping it into the leftover colored water there and then I'll continuously just kind of go back and add more colors so things just kind of start playing the way that I like them. There is really no sort of specific technique to it except for to sort of be responsive to it and let it do its thing. As you saw, there were some spots where there was like really heavy pigment and I did want to clear those up a little bit because if you let that pigment just sit there, it's going to be continuously reactive to water and also could scrape off. So I did think it was a good idea to sort of spread it around a bit. And I'm using two different spray bottles. I have my Distress Sprayer, which gives more of a fine mist, and then also just a regular spray bottle, which will give a more direct spray. The purple is really strong, so be careful with how much purple you add. You don't, if you don't want the purple to be the dominant color, you really have to be very light handed with it, and you may need to layer the blue back over it. I'm just sort of going with the flow here, and I do eventually decide to add a snowy hill or ground, and so that's going to cover up a good portion of that purple that's left there at the bottom. Once I add this, I actually did want to tone it down a little bit. And the way that I'm going to do that is with some Black Magic Tattered Angels spray. And first I sprayed the Tattered Angels spray onto the color burst sheet. Then I sprayed a little bit of water just to kind of tone it down a little bit because I don't want there to be black spots per se. I just want to really add that shimmer that's in there and rather than doing a shimmer spray in white I just sort of wanted to mix it up a little bit I like to use perfect pearls quite a bit um, in the perfect pearls color which you can also create with perfect pearls um, distress or sorry perfect perfect pearls powder you can create your own spray but I just wanted to sort of like you know do something a little bit different and like I said tone down that strong color there I created my own stencil with a W plus 9 starry backdrops and it's just on some really thick cardstock here. I'm going to tape the stencil down. This is a paper stencil so it's not going to be reusable. I'm going to tape it to my watercolor paper and to my mat so that way nothing shifts around because I'm going to be using the glitter paste that I got in my design team package. I'm trying to use quite a bit of different things that came in the package but also mixing it up with some of the stuff that I had from last year that is available still in the shop. You know, just because I like to mix the new and the old, I don't like to ignore supplies that I got in the past. I am spreading the distress, sorry, spreading, I don't know why I want to keep saying distress today. I am spreading the glitter paste through the stencil. It's the Bow Bunny glitter paste and this is in the sugar color which is basically like a clear although the glitter in it is a sort of green purple blue glitter and I'm spreading it through the stencil. What I'm noticing is that the paper stencil isn't really laying super flat to the watercolor cardstock and so I'm not getting perfect stars. It's kind of leaking out a little bit 
One way to solve that might be to use a little bit of temporary adhesive to stick your stencil down better, but I would worry that would rip the papers because then you would be temporarily adhering paper to paper, which I'm not sure how that would go, um, but that is something you could certainly try out. Or you could use a plastic stencil material that they sell at Tupelo Designs to create your own stencil with that dye and just kind of get a little bit more use out of it. But it did a fairly good job, and I'm not really trying to get solid stars so much as just add another layer of shimmer. Kind of the key today is to have a really sort of shimmery card. Now these are the W plus 9 Winter Pals from last year. It was part of their winter release, but it's still available in the shop, and they're still super cute. One of my favorite things about this stamp set is that it's pretty much a winter stamp set and not really a Christmas stamp set. The card that I make today, I could certainly send for Christmas, but I could also send it on um, any day of the winter. I stamped out the images with some VersaFine ink, which is waterproof, on the same watercolor paper that I used for my background, and I'm going to be coloring them with some Inktense pencils. With Inktense pencils, I generally add on the color all at once, so I just scribble a little bit of color into every area. And you do not need to have too much color because they are very intense, and so if you were to color in the entire image with the Inktense pencils, then when you go to add water, there wouldn't be much room to blend, and things would look very solid. If you want some shading, in the lightest areas, leave those white when you lay the pencil down, so that way as you pull the color out, they will stay lighter and add that shading. In this particular image, where, putting, where I put the shading is a little bit random. I'm mostly just trying to get it such that there is some bit of shading. It's not so much about where the light is as just making sure there's variation, because if you color something solid, it doesn't look as interesting, it doesn't have that feeling of being alive in the same way, and I really don't want them to look flat. Once I have all my color laid down and I'm using the same blue on both of the animals so that they will coordinate together, because at this point I'm not sure which ones I'm going to use on my card, I'd sometimes like to color in a couple of extra images because then I have things on hand for quick cards later on, but also because then I can choose what I really want to put on the card in the end, because sometimes I don't have a card completely envisioned before I start. I think that there's kind of two ways of going about making cards. Some people have a really clear idea of where they want to go in the end, and sometimes you're just experimenting and seeing where it will lead you, and that can be a little bit nerve-wracking at times, because you... Um, you know, you might be afraid of like making a mistake, you don't know where you're going to go, but you know, you can usually make it work. You're going to see here at the end that I have everything pretty much glued down and last minute make a change, and that's totally fine. As I blend out the Inktense pencils, I'm just dipping a little bit of water, uh, my brush into a little bit of water, and then spreading it out. I find that you have to be careful with these because, like I said, the color can be really intense, and so if you do not be sure to kind of wipe off the pen in between, sometimes you may get a more solid colored image. So if I'm finding that like I have a lot of essentially paint on the brush because when you touch the water to the Inktense pencils where it's colored on, it kind of gets some paint on your brush. And um, if I don't sort of wipe it off on my hand as you see me sort of continuously um, bringing the brush to my hand there, I sometimes get a even coverage all around. So my two recommendations for that are to do what I do and brush it off. Or if you're worried about picking up too much color or, and you want to sort of adjust things, you can get some color right off the pencil. And so if you find that your light area didn't stay light enough, it's hard to remove color, but you could certainly add some color to where you wanted it to be darker by pulling it right off of the pencil with a wet brush. Once I had those colored and cut out, I decided that I wanted a snowy hill, which was not part of my original plan, and the easiest way to create a snowy hill for me was to take that same glitter paste and just spread it out over a piece of cardstock. Now this is actually a heavyweight 110 pound white cardstock, but it curls a lot under the weight of that glitter paste. However, it did flatten out once I hit it with a heat gun. 
I really like the way that this snow looks. You can really create your own glitter paper that doesn't shed at all because once it's dry, it is permanent. And um, so you don't, you know, we, you know, sometimes when you touch glitter paper, it kind of comes off all over the place. And you can create it in any color that you have a reinker for because that bow bunny glitter paste can be colored with reinkers. Now I have this impression obsession birch tree die here. And I've die cut a few birch trees out of the watercolor cardstock. And it's kind of an off white, it's not a pure white, the cardstock, which makes perfect sense for birch trees. And so I'm not doing any coloring to them, I'm just using them straight with the watercolor cardstock, and I'm gluing them down with some multimedia mat. You might notice that the dies have those branches, the fine details there, but I wanted to keep it simpler, and so I just kind of trimmed off those branches and glued it down. I know that I am going to be covering the bottom with the hill so I don't need the birch trees to go all the way to the bottom. You want to make sure that your color burst panel is completely, completely dry before you start trying to add the glue. There was a couple spots that were still a little damp and the glue had a hard time sticking. So that might be a problem if you um, find that you're having trouble with it getting adhered. I stamped the sentiment, nothing warms the heart quite like a true friend, in the same watercolor paper so that everything would coordinate. And I adhered some things with pop dots, but the sentiment flat. So I adhered the, the critters with the pop dots and the sentiment flat. And now I'm working on my card base. You see here that I have that bone folder, which creates a nice crease in the card without leaving any sort of shine marks on it. And when I went to take my panel to my cardstock, thinking that I was finished, I really didn't like how the card which had so much white looked on a plain white card base and I felt like there needed to be a layer in between. So I'm going to add a black mat and this was a little bit tricky to do because the cardstock is now built up quite a few layers thick and it has glitter paste on it and it's thick watercolor paper to begin with but I was able to trim through those layers. I had to kind of go through my trimmer a couple times and do a little bit of detail work with the scissors there to trim off those edges but I think that having that black layer is going to add quite a pop to it and um, bring out some of the colors more and bring out the white in the snow. And so once I have that black mat on there, that's it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials and seeing what I pick up from Tupelo Designs LLC each month and what I do with it, then please subscribe to my channel and check me out every Tuesday for Tuesdays with Tupelo. Thanks for watching. Bye.